I've seen people increase their score from 600 all the way to 750 or 800 just by doing this. In the US, one of the things that can pretty much affect every aspect of your life is your credit score. What people don't realize is how easy it is to impact that if you know the drivers. In today's video, we're going to talk about everything you need to know to dramatically increase your credit score. Big favor before we dive into everything is to give this a thumbs up to help with the algorithm. And if you are new here, whether you want to get more cash back or to do some cool trips, then consider subscribing. Whether that's flying international first in business or going to the Maltese or Bora Bora. Okay, so why does any of this matter? Rightly or wrongly, a lot of people will discriminate you based off your score. If you're someone just starting out your career or you live in a high cost of living city, then renting is the best example. A lot of landlords won't consider your application if for scores below either 650 or 600. And by all means, it's still possible to get a place, but you're not the first choice and you might not get your first choice. If you're looking for an auto loan or to get a mortgage, your credit score can dramatically impact the rates that you get. In a lot of cases, and depending on the amount that you're borrowing, it could easily be a few thousand dollars to tens of thousands of dollars. And to be fair, there are arguments against credit scores, so the fact that you could manually underwrite or just pay off cash. To me, at least, that's choosing to play life on hard mode, which is fine, but I don't really want to do that if I don't need to. Having a good credit score and paying off cash or manual underwriting are not mutually exclusive. You could do both, and I'd rather have that optionality. A credit score is pretty much a knife, and you only use it when it's advantageous. Your FICO score is driven by five key factors. 35% is going to be your payment history, 30% is the amount owed, 15% is the length of credit history, 10% is new credit, which is inquiries, and 10% is the credit mix. Let's run through how these are scored, and then we'll talk about some strategies to optimize this and pretty much play it to your advantage. With the 10% credit mix one, they're looking at your experience using different tools. So technically, if there were two versions of me, one that has only had credit cards and another version that has also had credit cards, but also a mortgage and an auto loan, then that other person is going to be better off because they've shown their ability to manage different things. 10% is going to be new credit, which is also known as hard inquiries. So these are checks to your credit report every time you're looking for either new credit or additional credit. I'd say that there's two major things to consider here. Number one is that your FICO score does not factor in inquiries that are more than a year old. So pretty much after the first 12 months, it stops affecting you. Number two, after 24 months, it drops off your file completely. Pretty much like it didn't even exist. In terms of scoring, lower is better. So zero is excellent. One to two is good. And then it gets progressively worse. We'll get more into this one, but I do think it ends up being a trap for a lot of people. So be careful. 15% is going to be the length of credit. They're generally looking for three things. Number one is the age of the oldest account. Number two is the average age of all accounts. Number three, the last time you've used certain ones. As you'd expect, the longer it is, the better. So nine plus years is excellent. 30% is going to be the amount owed, also known as utilization. The formula for this is going to be credit used divided by total credit available. The lower the better here, so generally you'd want between 1% to 9% and then ideally below 30%. This is one of the factors that you have the most control over and could easily represent a 10 to 200 point jump. Payment history represents a whopping 35% and the formula for this is going to be total on-time payments divided by total number of payments. 100% is excellent, 99% is good, 98 is fair, poor is 97, and very poor is below 97. Okay, so how do we win these? Let's start off average age of accounts and there's a few different tactics here. Number one is you don't want to close your oldest card. The idea is that that's your anchor and it's going to help you in the long run. Number two, if your oldest card has an annual fee, then either try to product change it to a no annual fee option or downgrade it to something else that has no fee. Or if that's not an option, get a second card that fits that criteria of no fee and cancel the first one once it's old enough. Hopefully that makes sense, but you generally don't want to pay $30 for the rest of your life for no reason. Number three is that you generally want to add more cards while you're younger and be more aggressive then. For example, let's say you're 20 right now and you have two cards. In 10 years time when you're 30, average age of accounts is going to be 10. If at that point you add one card, then the average age of accounts drops to 6.66. If on the flip side, let's say you start with 10 cards. Average age in 10 years is still going to be 10 given how math works, but when you add that one card, the impact is going to be a lot lower. You're only dropping down to 9.09. .09. The average of the group is going to be a higher number because the group's larger. The fourth tip is to either go for no annual fee cards or ones that have downgrade paths into no annual fee options. So for example, the Chase Sapphire Reserve is pretty expensive, but if it doesn't fit after the first year, you can downgrade it to something like the Freedom Flex, which has no fee. The main takeaway is that it be aggressive early and pick cards that have optionality. On that note, if you do want to learn about cards, whether it's travel, cash back, pretty much anything out there, and you want to support the channel, we do have links on the website, asksabby.com, and down below in the description box. Make sure the links are competitive, but otherwise it's a huge way to support the channel. So thank you guys in advance. Utilization or amount owed is at 30% and it's also the one that you have the most control over. Again, the formula for this is going to be credit used divided by total credit available. You do generally want to use your card, so you do want some utilization, but the lower the better. 
well, that's pretty stupid. I can't really do that because I don't have a large credit limit, but I need to use my card. 100%, I get why that might be annoying. And there's a trick here. What you might not know is that the credit use number for this calculation is based off a specific time. For almost all cards out there, they're taking a snapshot when your statement closes for your account. So for example, if your statement is from November 3rd to December 2nd, then December 2nd is that close date when they're taking a picture. If you take a look at one of my cards, I'm using $977 of a $1,000 limit, which is terrible. In effect, 98% utilization, which would tank your score. Looking at the details, you can see that the next close date is December 2nd. If I pay most of that balance, let's say $976.85 on December 1st, then my utilization is only going to be $1 out of 1,000. In this case, even though I'm using my card normally, I'm not negatively affecting my credit score because of that utilization number. And in fact, if you look at my statement for last month, you can see that's what I normally do. In October, I spent $802 and I paid down $801. The balance at close was $1, meaning that I was one out of 1,000. Well, how much of an impact can this even have? I know that Credit Karma is not the most accurate, but I've seen people increase their score from 600 all the way to 750 or 800. I'd argue that for this, the main cost is going to be time as well as the willingness to be organized. On that note, I'm happy to say that this video is sponsored by Notion. I'm working with them to create a suite of templates and there's going to be a free credit building one in the description box down below. If you are someone trying to increase your credit score for the new year, then I think being intentioned and organized about it is pretty key. Let's actually dive into the free template. The entire idea of this is to make your life easier. Right up here, you'd put all your cards as well as the balance when you're looking at it in the limit. Here you can see your utilization and whether it's too high. So in this case, 25% and also this 50% is way too high. Like we talked about, you'd want to pay this down. That way, when the picture day comes, it looks a lot nicer. Kind of the equivalent of taking a picture facing downwards. In addition, you also have close dates and due dates and a tick box for when you paid. In this bottom section, you have the close dates as well as the due dates. And if you do any check marking down here, it also affects the top area. If you do want to use the template, remember that there is a duplicate button on the top right. So you make your own version. That way I or no one else can see any of your information. Also, if for whatever reason it says no data source like here, just press the close day calendar, due date calendar, and it should be fine. One pro tip for all of this is that I would put a lot of your close dates for your different accounts towards the same dates. So what I mean by this is that for all of my Chase cards, they either close on the first or the second of the month. That means that I know that if I need to do anything like this, that I'm going to do all of my Chase cards around the 30th or maybe the first. In addition, there also is a pro version of this that has more tools and also more views. Looking at this section, it's pretty familiar, but you have additional lines for things like utilization level. In addition to the goals that we previously had, it tells you what the target would be based off the goal. And all of this stuff is programmatic, so there is a lot of code. So for example, for the Capital One Saver 1, if you were targeting 1 to 9%, you'd want the balance to be 180. At the moment, it's currently 500 over here, and you'd want to pay down 320, which is this field, what would SEBI do? Pretty much what you need to pay down in order to get to the target level that you want to get to. When you enter your cards, days until close will tell you how far it is before you do need to worry about something. And what I think is pretty useful if you did miss a payment is tracking how long it'll take for you to actually hit the level you want. Sign up for Notion using the link down below in the description box and start using the free template today. If you like it and you want to support the channel, then consider the pro template. And again, thank you to Notion for sponsoring today's video. A few final thoughts on utilization. Reminder that certain cards like hybrid cards as well as business cards do not contribute to this. So if you do need to carry a balance, then I would carry it on a business card. For this, they also look at it on a per card basis as well as across all cards. Generally though, I'd recommend looking at this on a per card basis because a lot of issuers do get spooked if you end up maxing out one card. That one issuer, especially if that's your only card with them, gets super spooked because it looks like you're about to bust out. Busting out is when you max out your credit cards and choose not to pay them back. One of the super cool things about utilization is that it's not permanent. For a lot of the other ones, if you make a mistake, you're rebuilding from a worse position. Here, that's not really the case. It's kind of like a new cycle every month. Moving on to credit mix for our purpose and arguably everyone's purpose, it's not worth stressing about. So for example, right now I live in a pretty walkable city and I don't have a car. If I need to go somewhere very far, I'll either rent a car or I'll take an Uber. Even though my credit mix would be better if I get an auto loan, it just doesn't make sense to do that. Same thing with tuition or mortgage. If you don't need to do it, then I don't see the point. Payment history is a pretty interesting one because it's one of the factors where you technically start at perfect. In effect, it can only get worse if you miss a payment, so it's kind of punishing you for making mistakes. If you're someone that's never made a mistake, then great, keep doing that, just don't miss any payments, maybe set up auto pay. If you have though, then it might take a long time to fix that number, given how the math works. There is a trick here that might not be that obvious, but it's to add more cards. And obviously there is a give take here because if your credit score is lower, then you might not be eligible for the cards that you want. 
Inquiries is probably one that people get the most stressed about, and you'd be surprised. I've done YouTube for about five years now, and I've seen people come to the channel, tell me that they're interested in the card, but they're holding off because they're protecting their score. If you're getting a mortgage or something, then great, but if you're not doing that in the next six months, then you're protecting your score for no reason. A lot of those same people end up coming back year after year, saying that, oh, they're thinking about applying still, but they're holding off. Maybe I'm crazy, but for me at least, the point of a credit score is access to different things. So whether that's a mortgage, whether that's additional cards for intro bonuses or for different utility. The goal isn't just to have a high score for the sake of a high score, it's to use it for something else. One of the best comparisons I've heard is that credit building is a lot like working out. So when you work out, your muscles get damaged. An idea is that post-workout, your body repairs itself and replaces those fibers, making you stronger. Your body is destroying to create. In the same way, credit inquiries do the same thing. They stop affecting you after 12 months and they disappear completely after 24 months. You're taking that hit in the short term to make your credit profile stronger, to add more cards. Two steps back, 10 steps forwards. Again, if you want to learn about cards, we have links in the website, asksebi.com, and down below in the description box. Also, thank you to Notion for sponsoring today's video and link down below for that free template. If you made it to this point in the video, then leave a memo pad emoji in the comments down below and I'll try to heart it and also respond. My question for you is how do you think about your credit score? Is it a tool or are you trying to preserve that number? Also, what's been your experience growing that score and do you have any other tips? Let me know and everyone else know in the comments down below. Big favor, give this a thumbs up, consider subscribing, but otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.